So, Greg, we've met back in 2012, first time in Tarnoff. I remember I was chasing you for a quick interview. And one thing which I said to yourself, which I think caught your attention and you've just agreed for, for an interview was, Greg, you know how to achieve goals and this interview is my goal. And I remember having five minutes of your precious time. So since that, I've been really grateful for it. Then back in 2013, you spent with me probably about half an hour. And uh, since that, I've been just speaking to people and you know, I wrote it down that one day I will be working with yourself. One day I will be working with this team. And since that, you've been in a team, you left and now you're back. It's wonderful to have you back, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people can actually confirm that. So, Thanks. welcome back. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you so much for taking your time for this quick interview. Um, just first question, where do you see yourself from this point of your life? Because uh, as much as I know you, and as much from our conversation, you know, you still feeling like you just started you're hungry for for racing where do you see yourself from this point well you know i mean uh looking at looking at it from that point of view i i am still very hungry and i look you know i never plan my retirement mm. i never plan how far i'm going to go all i know that all the time that i feel the desire to race the desire to win and most importantly that the rest of me can stay in one piece and in good shape. I, I go. Yeah. I want to. I want to race. I really love what I do more than people know, and uh, that's the only reason I'm just sitting here, right? But when I'm racing, the only thing I want to do is be the best. So, the day that I don't believe that I can be the best, that that's the day that I I hope that I'm true to myself. Will take the step to to uh, yeah, stop from competitive racing and uh, yeah. move on to other things. You use the word desire more than goal or you know, sort of ch something small to achieve. Desire is quite big, isn't it? Desire is more like you feel like that burn, that itch, you know, uh, that you want to do that. Sure. So what, what really means the desire? When, when you started your journey with Speedway, so were you thinking? that you're gonna achieve what you achieved or was it just like an enjoyment just want to have fun just want to you know um, do something I'm passionate about well I, I wouldn't do it just for the fun uh, however the the desire that I had to to pursue a career in speedway racing came from a very young age surrounding myself with uh, whether I surrounded myself with certain people on purpose or I had the opportunity to be surrounded by a lot of these people as well, they gave me the interest and the motivation and the, the desire to follow my, my dreams. And of course, my biggest goal was to be the world champion. I still have the biggest goal to be the world champion. It doesn't matter if you've done it or you haven't done it or how many times you've done it. If I'm going to be racing, my goal is to win the world championship and all my league racing you know people try to differentiate the the, the leagues with the teams i mean with with the uh the individual success yeah. that i'm going for but for me on a personal level i just want to win the world championship yeah when i come to a, a team i'm with the team and together we win i can't win the team races by myself Absolutely. we need seven guys to win we need good management some days you only need four guys to win and some days you yeah need six guys to win yeah. but together we have to help each other one day I might have an off day two other guys have a great day it doesn't matter with the team one and Absolutely. that's that's what happens so uh, as, as you said there um, team is really important but you have that you know sort of you don't <coughs> separate the, the, the individual competition or the team competition you always have to give your best you didn't even say that you want to win you said you have to give your best. Yeah, sure. What difference does it you make? You say that too. Yeah. What difference does it make? Well, I think we're all different as mm -hmm. individuals. And for me, of course, I want to win. But I know that there's a lot of... Uh, you're going to lose a lot before you win. And 
a good winner, I think, is truly is a good loser. And I've been that's been said to me in the way in the past, and I've thought about it and thought about it and trying to figure out how does that really work. A good winner is a good loser, but I know now because I've been <laughs> all over the board. I've <laughs> I've had the whole spread right, and I took the. I used to be an angry loser and you know so frustrated and why, why you know you're trying to fix it, but then again surrounding myself with good people. I've had uh, a few sports psychologist type people that I've worked with, been fortunate to get a few really good tools to use. And But more of it, I've really learned from from following my heroes and guys that I really like. And some of those guys, the names for me are the ones that are good with the crowds, they're good with their sponsors, they're good with the media, and they're good at what they do. Mm. So for me, I'm a nice guy and I'm, I talk to everybody and... and you know, I have time for everyone. Yeah. But when it comes down to business and racing, I want to win. Yeah. I might lose the heat and I look like I've got a smile on my face, but inside I'm burning up. There's a lot of fire going. And I've really found the way to just, okay, turn that into positive energy. And I've used it because I don't want to show people around in my competition that I'm angry. I want to show them that you got me. But I'm going to get you back. Yeah, and that's how I play. And you know what? It's um, quite a few good good points, and I more than two, two good points. But the two good points which I can pick up from what you said now is, you know, when you show to somebody, at the end of the day, it's not that person's fault, isn't it? That they have to sort of pick up your negative energy. It's to learn how to turn that negative situation to positive. To realize, okay, that's past. Now, it's now, and whatever happens in the future is because of how I react to it now. Would you agree to that? Yeah, for sure. So, seeing even... And what, everybody, excuse me, but everybody has a different situa situation or, or case scenario yeah. that they, you have to find your way, but what you just said is spot on Well, for me. One of my favorite uh, sayings and quotes was, the same wind blows on everyone. Right. So, there's a five riders in the race... And I've seen a situation, you probably experienced that before you realize what's going on. You had a winner, you won a race, and you were not happy about that race. Right, exactly. Right. You got one point or came last, and you were so happy for your, you know, the way you fought it, you know, the way, the way that the whole race went. Again, maybe you, don't, you can't put the three, you put a one or zero next to your name, but then again, the satisfaction out of it. Sure. And, 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 I, and I think when, when, you, when you look at that sentence, the same wind blows on everyone. If you don't like it, that it blows on your face, turn around. Yeah. If it blows to, towards your back, turn around if you don't like it. Yeah. Would you agree to that? Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Uh, here's a question I wanted to ask, ask you for a long time. What do you think is the uh, sort of most damaging sabotaging, losing, or when you put yourself in the position when you ask yourself a question, what's next? What's more demotivating? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I don't know. De demotivating is, is a word I've never actually used <laughs> or heard okay. in that matter. So, um, Something which will sort of turn things to really doubts and, you know, sort of put you off. Maybe that's the best way to say it. Losing a match, a, a race, a heat, or p getting yourself to the stage that you're, you, you'll ask yourself, okay, what's next for me? One heat, one loss, or whatever it is, doesn't affect me in that way at all. That only motivates me to fix it. Yeah. If that happened time and time and time again, you know, it's hard to put a number on it, but if it if I had one race, one night of racing like this, and I scored one point, that's then I've got questions. Yes, because uh, that's not me. Yeah. So either we had some serious problems with the bikes, or I really had a bad day, and I normally don't have that bad of a day. I can have an off day. Yeah. But you're a human being. Yeah. And I understand that. And again, yeah. this is obviously I'm 47 years old. I've been and seen a lot and been through a lot. 47 years young. Exactly. 47 years young. 
which I'm always good with, but we're younger than most of them, right? Absolutely. So, and probably one of the greatest things is that I learned from is I've also been through a divorce. And a divorce is probably one of the more challenging things too because you're trying to figure out who you are. So is it my fault? Is it her fault? Is it their fault? Is it... Then you understand it takes two to tango, right? And it's... There's always three sides to this every story. <laughs> Mine and yours and then the truth. So... <laughs> and it's... Uh, uh, through the people that I spoke to and... and uh, which was only a couple of times throughout my divorce... Um, which I've never really spoken about this before, but it's, nope. it's, it's nothing you know, new and people yeah, go yeah. through it every day, right? But the biggest thing I learned from it was I learned something about myself and that it's okay to do things the way I do it, but you ha it's how you address it and how you, you put your, your, you get through it and you go yeah. forward. And I can sit and think about everything that happened yesterday and think about it and think about it, but that's not going to make it better tomorrow. No. I can actually go, you know what, I really made a mistake, but how can I make it better? Yes. Maybe it wasn't bad, but it wasn't really good. How can I make it better? That's what I got out of that, and I've applied that to my whole life and racing since then, and everything has turned around. Do you not think that um, a lot of young writers, they never put themselves through the question, what can I make better out of the yesterday? or how can I become better? It's more like the, the focus on how bad things were. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, the, the, most, the longest or the most communication we ever have with other person, it's really with ourselves. Does that make sense? Yeah. The most communication we have throughout the day, it's with our own selves. Oh, yes. So the quality yeah, of the, the, the information, the quality of the message we pass to our own brain really or mm -hmm. mind I would say reflects the quality of our actions so if you think you know if your focus is on how bad things were and instead of the way you said how can I make it better or how can I take more or better out of the whole situation so uh, when you when you think about it that way, you know I think it's quite damaging, isn't it? When when especially for younger writers, it can be very damaging. And and we had this small discussion earlier too that the young writers, you know, they're obviously trying to um, find their way forward all the time, yeah. whether it's with just their equipment and what they're doing, or just where am I in my racing? And they get so angry and they get so frustrated and and uh, you know. In many ways, that's that's youth. They have to go through this, no matter what you tell them. It's just like being a kid growing up and your parents telling you to put your shoes on this way and to brush your teeth and do that and do that. And in the end, you're so tired of listening to it. You're like, what do you know? You know, that yeah, kind of a thing. Yeah. But it all, at some point, it all, I believe that that people have to go through a certain period before they're ready to, I got it. Now it makes sense. I, th I think personally um, that a lot of youngsters in Speedway, in any sport really, they're trying to go and take a shortcut. Sure. <laughs> and I don't think there's a shortcut for success. Would you agree to that? So, you know, you've been, you've been racing for 30 years, would I be correct? 30, Easy. A couple yeah. of years, yeah. yeah. And so, I took a lot of shortcuts. But that's probably why I'm still racing at this age, because it took me a while to find out that the shortcuts weren't always the way to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly, and and and, and I think um, one of the most important thing, things, you know, for the for the young generation is to realize that they should take responsibility. And every single defeat, well, yeah, defeat and bad day, is actually for a reason to build their character, because if they win a match, if they win a race. They will never learn, if that makes sense. Yeah, sure. For you sure. know, they will celebrate, which obviously is something we we want to see, we encourage to see. But the defeat, this the, the difficult situation builds your character. So can you can you remember any situation that you actually can say that was character building when you were actually a young writer, just at the beginning? Without a doubt. I mean was that yesterday then. Uh, well, yeah, it wasn't that long ago. Yeah, <laughs> um, uh, for sure. You know, you, I can think back and and uh, remember 
various moments in my career, numerous moments where you've you've been questioning yourself and this and that and angry and then realizing that you know somebody will put a, a wise word in your head and it's just whether you're ready to hear it or you're not. Sometimes you're just not ready to hear it and it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you've raced a bike before or if you've never raced a bike or what you've done. How have you, successful you've been? It's just if they're not ready to, to hear it then it's really difficult to to get there. And I, I remember being there and then suddenly one or two people you look up to give you that that word and it's just someone that you respect or they said one thing that made you go I get it yeah. I get it and that's hap that happened to me and it's happened numerous times since because you're thinking you got it going and someone says something and you go and it was more like not like an angry but it's like huh huh and then you go home and you sit on it and you think about it and pretty impressive so now now i know why you reacted like that when i was talking to luke <laughs> <laughs> now i know what that luke me luke's means when when i was saying to luke that forget about the first race second race is what happens now sure <laughs> you came yeah you came to us and you had that, that look <laughs> okay you think, i've heard this before too you know <laughs> hmm, that's two times that's that's got to be some sense in it <laughs> absolutely absolutely but um greg um do you think that somebody and somebody who can bring that mind trading side of it and obviously mind uh, sessions with the speedway riders no matter what age they are do you think that is something that should happen should be used or stay away from it I don't think you should stay away from it at all you, I, I say you but people shouldn't stay away from it because perhaps you you know being in the position that you're in for instance you know obviously we've had a few quite a few conversations over the years but it's it's a matter of the the guy that I looked up to the most it was a Swedish guy so his English was slightly broken but he didn't try to get into me he was just there and he was just around and he just watched and he figured me out or assumed what figured he, you know, he saw something that obviously was bothering me. So he just played it and it was just the guy just made one comment on the side that made me go. <laughs> and I didn't, because I watched him work with a lot of guys and, and I'm always skeptic or I was always skeptic of this guy's trying to get in my head. This really? guy's trying to get. Okay. Back, yeah. in, back in the day. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Until this guy and it made me like, wow. I like this guy, and it's it's probably because you have such a big guard up inside. You think yeah. you're the you got so much power. You can do this on your own. I can do it. I can do it. But in reality, some people can. Some people are just their makeup is just natural, and it just goes. They don't need. And I and I think especially with speedway, when you know when you start as a young, so you're racing a bike with no brakes, sometimes hundred kilometers an hour or even faster, and then you sort of become more. Sounds great, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, it does. Yeah, yeah. It does, especially for a young guy. Like when, when they, they sort of, you know, pe people around them, probably parents or something, they say, and don't do it, you're going to hurt yourself. True. But they want to be sort of, you know, in your teenage age, you're sort of, you're trying to go against uh, every adult, <laughs> giving, them, giving you some kind of advice. And I think it's that, that, that kind of stage. But then, as you said, you need to grow to a certain level that you hear something and you're like, that could work. Yeah. That's something I was looking for. But you need to get ready for that. Greg, we're going to have the whole season. Uh, and to be fair with yourself, as I said, it's, it's been my desire to sit down next to you again. And even though, be a part of a team. So, it's great to have you. Thank you very much. It's and great to be here. You it's know, great to have the opportunity. Absolutely. Well, it's great to have an opportunity to interview you again. Uh, this also goes live on a Facebook. Fantastic, even better. So, hey people. Uh, <laughs> oh, on are we here? I'm phone. sorry. No, no, that's you fine. That's fine. Don't worry. Hey people. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, a lot of people uh, have been waiting because uh, obviously they've they've heard that I've interviewed yourself and uh, how passionate I've been about having the opportunity to work with yourself and being with the uh, same team. But again, thank you so much. Thank you for giving the pleasure of watching you today, standing next to you and cheering you. 
looking forward for next races. Absolutely. We're lucky to have a guy like you around for when hopefully we don't need it, but probably we do. Well, Everybody thank you so much for that. It. Appreciate it because it means a lot. Uh, I truly believe, and you, you, you might agree or not, and it's not about just myself. I just think that no matter what level you are as an athlete, uh, if you're successful, you want to know why you're successful. For sure. First of all, you learn how to turn that switch on and just become successful. So don't bother your mind with how it happened, but then you want to know because you want to go to the next level. Absolutely. So hopefully there's where I could help. I'm quite sure you can. And you're going to learn all these guys as you go along and you're going to figure, you're going to find their, 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 uh, their points that can probably be improved or just to help them to discover themselves and, and make them better individuals. I, I, f I think even today was a huge lesson for me because uh, I, could, I could see a couple things that I can work on, but sure. this is for good of the team. It'll happen. Absolutely. Sure. Thank you again. Thanks again, man. You got it. Thanks, Norris. Cheers.